Good afternoon. Welcome to episode. I keep calling it episode because it's going to stick like that. Episode 440. And the topic today is Is marriage a success? And if so, is being single or divorce a failure? We'll get into that in a moment. So let me introduce myself. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And every day I do a talk under the theme or under the heading of Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And it goes out on Facebook Live and then it ends up going onto YouTube and also goes out to podcasts after that. And I'll tell you about those at the end. So today's topic was um, I just saw a meme that, tr that tickled me that I posted, which I'll, I'll tell you what the meme said. Um, but also because of a conversation with a friend of mine who's going through a painful divorce right now. Um, and some of the backstory on that. No names mentioned, of course, for confidentiality. But also how, how it was interesting how that triggered somebody else who is reported to be a dating expert who has a very different view from me. So um, let's get into this. So first of all, the, the meme that I saw and then I reposted is, I'm reading off the computer, so I'm looking off to the side, so bear with me for a second. Stop asking why I'm still single. I don't ask how you're still married. So that was like a real dig to that conversation. But I want to bring this up from the point of view of there's a very big assumption in the culture, not necessarily individual, but in the culture that people basically are supposed to, when they go to, when they get born, they get raised, they go to school, they go to college, they get a job, they get married, they have kids, they retire, they die. That's kind of the, the flavor in a way of the American dream. And for a lot of people, that still runs in the subconscious because they're not necessarily voicing that out loud going, I really hope that I'm going to be this, 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 and this. In fact, nowadays more than anything else I'm noticing in the business arena, there's a lot more draw from, or pull, draw, pull, push. <laughs> What's the word I want to use? There's a lot more um, desire for that word to be independent rather than being at the mercy of a company that can go out of business. So the old paradigm of working the same job for 40 years, getting your gold watch and retiring, is no longer holding its esteem that it used to hold. And I feel the same thing's happening in the area of relationship and marriage. Now, I'm not saying I'm against marriage, and I want to speak to that in my own personal experience in a moment. But what I want to speak to is this context, or this conversation, or perhaps this framework, where somehow being married is better than being single, and certainly better than being divorced. Now, a couple of data points that I remember reading a while ago, which I believe is still accurate, and I could be wrong, is that the um, divorce rate after first marriage is 50%. The divorce rate after second marriage is 70%. That, that's a whole other topic in its own. I've talked about that before. I think last year sometime I did talk about that. But the, the point I want to make is that being married isn't a guaranteed, a guarantee of spending your life together. Now, personally, or about my own family. My parents were together for 59 years, almost six, well, actually they were married for 59 years, but together for longer than that, 60 plus years, until my mother passed away in 2012. And was the relationship perfect? In some ways it was, in some ways it definitely wasn't. But that was the paradigm that I was raised in. So I had this framework in front of me of parents that stayed together forever. And to be honest, that actually scared me out of getting married, <laughs> to, be, to be totally transparent, because I didn't know if I could do that. I didn't know that I could find somebody I could, that I, <laughs> what came up was someone I could put up with. Mm, interesting what my subconscious wants to say. But the paradigm of wanting to find somebody I could spend 60 years with, um, well, I mean, back then I was a lot younger, probably th at that point 20, 30 years, but I didn't know if it was possible. Even though I saw it in front of me, my parents, part of me was thinking they were just lucky. It wasn't possible for everybody to do that. And based on the research and based on the information, it isn't a, it is not 100 percent guarantee. Just to be re just a reality check, considering how many divorces there are. So, lifetime partnership is not a very common thing. Certainly not the majority of options. So let me put that on the table first. Second, second point, third point, another point. <laughs> There's a debate, particularly around people who are over the age of say. 40, that if you haven't been married to that point, there's something wrong with you. Now, I'm one of those people who passed the point of 40 without getting married. 
<laughs> slightly. Um, and the truth about this is there's a lot of judgment from one side of the fence to the other side of the fence. And I suspect a lot of it is the green grass syndrome, meaning that there are people who are looking at, and it's funny, I'm trying to think if it comes from a single people. No, it usually comes from married people who are judging people for being single. A lot of times while that's coming up is <laughs> because they have this belief that they're envious of the other person. They feel that the other person, the grass is green on the other person's side, on the other, on the other side of the fence. So they, they're actually getting pissed off at the single person because they're stuck in a marriage they don't want. That's the experience I've seen happen. So I'm not saying again, it's not for everybody, but I'm just saying these are things I've noticed and things I've witnessed. So a couple more pieces I want to add to the, the conversation. Um, the friend I was talking about at the beginning, who I'm um, supporting just energetically because she's in no place right now to hire me as a coach because she's literally paying off so much money from the fees she incurred that her husband won't pay for after he after ran away from her or he deserted her. And she's found out since of two other women that he was with before that, that he treated the same way. Basically, he was like he was a narcissist from what they can tell. But she fell for him and she got married to him. And now she is basically strewn across the rocks, as it were, being dumped by him. And the pain and suffering she's going through from having her marriage dreams, sh dreams shattered I mean, sometimes I can barely fathom the pain people go through when that happens. So my point I want to make around that is that we are in a place where marriage is no longer the guarantee it used to be. Now, going back 50, 60 years, marriage was pretty much a guarantee for that generation. And even then it wasn't always true. I mean, just the, the affairs and the lies that come out 20, 30 years later, what really happened back then, proves the fact that these marriages were not perfect all the time either. So again, this paradigm, this conversation, this um, topic, there isn't a clean answer for this. So I want to let you know really clearly that I'm not saying this is the right way, the wrong way. I'm just saying, if anything, if nothing else, have a little bit of decency in your understanding, have a little bit of respect for other people who have different choices than you, and have a willingness to let people have their own lives. Because some people are judging the shit out of other people because they're not doing what they think they should be doing. Now like, that extends way beyond this conversation. Because people judge other people for all sorts of strange things. But this piece is a dance that I've been involved with for a while because I've been in the area of relationship coaching and I'm single. And there are people out there who believe there's something wrong if, that, if I'm doing that. Now, that's their stuff, not mine, because I know why I'm doing this and I'm passionate about it and I'm fully aligned with what I do. It's my mission, my purpose, my work. But boy, it's so interesting to watch people's... Um, desire to to upset me because something wrong with it apparently which cracks me up at times it pisses me off to be honest let's be clear about it sometimes i go dude seriously but it gets a bit strange at times so the piece i want to bring into the conversation which i haven't done yet i think let's see where it goes if you watch more broadcasts before this happens where i'll be off the side downloading something else to add to the conversation so um I would say the majority of people, hi Gina, nice to have you on the podcast, thank you for being here. Um, another statistic, which is a personal statistic I'll throw out there, is the majority of people I know who are single now, who are over the age of 40, should we say, the majority of those were married before. So they are divorced single versus natively single, <laughs> innately single. So the question that comes up for me is like, which is better? Is there one that's better? Is going, having gone through a marriage and then divorce better than being single the whole way through? All of this stuff is not necessarily, again, I have distinct answers for. I know my choice, but I'm very aware that there are people who judge scathingly people who have different choice than they've made. And one of the comment, one of the Post I, that that meme I mentioned at the beginning. I posted on somebody else's feed because there was a comment about singlehood versus being married, and their perspective is very clear. It's like if you, it's like if you if you're not married, or, you're not, or no, the, the context it was was about that if you're not looking for a relationship, there's something wrong with you. If you're not in a relationship or looking for one, there's something wrong with you. And I was like, whoa, excuse me. First of all, I've said this before on broadcast. My personal experience is that being in a relationship or so to say not being in a relationship for the last 
10 years now, which is more than 11 years now, was intentional, well, it was initially, but it's become intentional because I got really clear that the work I was building, the direction I was heading in, and the, and the, and the drive that is pulling me, my purpose basically, had to be installed, I had to be expressed, or I had to be living in me in such a way that when I do start getting into a relationship again, it will not deter or block that purpose, let's put it that way. And knowing my past experiences in relationships before this, I would give up everything for the relationship. And basically I would be purposeless, to be blunt. I just lost track of anything I was focusing on. Yeah, I would go to work, I would do what I was doing, but, it wasn't, but anything I was really focused on, well, the only thing I was focused on was relationship, which at the time was wonderful for a few months, and then it would start going down the tubes every single time. So for me, I got clear very clearly. That when I got clear very clearly? Hmm. <laughs> Watching my own language here. For me, this dance of being single was really clear that as much as I wanted to be in a relationship at times, I knew that if I chose it at that, those earlier points, I would... Basically what it would do is I would, um, let's say this, I would not be available to my work and to my clients. Nowadays, in the last couple of years, I've felt that my work is strong enough in me because I'm so, one, because I know it's Facebook lies every day, but my calling is so strong in me that relationship is no longer a threat to that, as I used to put it. Yes, I used it as a threat because I was really clear that my, my work wasn't strong enough for me at the time. And even though I'd written my book and I've been on all these summits, I still felt that if I went into a relationship, I would probably fall off track and go into that place, even though I know better now, because I didn't know better before. But now I get clear that that works now. The, 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 there's a, um, the way I talk about it is that it, for the masculine man, which is what I've really been focusing on how to become more and more, just to be clear, is that it's, one of my, one of my teachers talks about it, for men, for men it's purpose first, relationship second. For women, it's purpose and relationship can happen by side by side. There's no, there's no, there's no sequence required because for most women, being in the feminine relationship to multitask is one of the gifts you have with the feminine. It's a whole other teaching I'll get into another time, or repeat another time. So for me, that was the journey of discovering that I actually, first of all, I had a purpose. That two, I knew you know what it was, and three, I need to execute it, express it, live it, and then I can have a relationship. I've actually modified that teaching for me personally because I believe, frankly, for all of us, it's a relationship with a higher power first, then purpose then relationship. Now again, for the feminine, you can maybe do all three at the same time, but for me as a masculine man, I'm very clear how good I am at doing one thing at a time. Like, if I'm watching the TV, I won't hear a word you're saying. I know that about myself. That's honesty, because most men don't think they know that. That's the truth. We are singular in focus. So having a conversation with you, we won't notice something going by necessarily. Unless we focus on that, then we forgot what you said. That's one of the challenges being the masculine inhabitants, as it were. So, Saying that to say that being single was a requirement in my life, in my work, and has been up to this point or up to recently, because any relationship that I was leading into, if it didn't, this is the other part, by the way, okay, be transparent here. I've had temptations of relationship over the last year, especially the last couple of years. And my personal experience has been to really, um, well, I, I know lots of beautiful women. I love being around women. It's one part of my work and part of my joy of being a man. But dating any of those women, I did date a couple along the way, I could feel in very early on, very early on, that if I wasn't finding that she was aligned with my work or was complementary to my work, or I had a way of partnering together, I'd say no. I knew that the split wouldn't work because the reality is and it's funny, a friend of mine talked about this. This is a different friend. This is a friend of mine. She is, um, she's a power speaker. She does, she does 40, she was in last year, or well, year before last when I saw her, I was talking to her. She'd been in 40 cities in one year. She got travels all different cities, including prisons, does these major talks. She's a major speaker, teacher, guide, coach, facilitator. Wonderful woman, I love her, she's a dear friend of mine. And she was telling me how she was dating this business executive. I think in New York is where he lived. And she said it got ridiculous because he could only call her on lunch breaks. Now you got this woman, who is an independent speaker, travels around doing all her work, her schedule is her own. Dating this guy who's a, I think he's a banker, investment banker, something like that, who had strict hours he was stuck where he couldn't talk to her, except during the lunch break. And, she, and it, it, really, it really got clear, she could not date him anymore because there was no commonality, there was no place to play together. And recognizing that for me, which is a reflection back to myself, was I know that I'm on the right track. So when I have people challenging me about being single versus being in a relationship, 
because some people say you should be in a relationship for the sake of being in a relationship. It's like, just date somebody. My answer is very simple. No way in hell. That clear. This paradigm of relationship I'm talking about may be elevated, may be different, may just be weird, but I believe that it's important to have relationships that honor and support you in your life. And if you take on a relationship to avoid your life, that's a mistake. That's a chapter in my book, by the way. 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. I'll tell you about that at the end if you want to find out more about my book. But the, the paradigm of being choosing a relationship and then forgetting everything else, which I did when I was younger, is not the way to live a relationship. It's not healthy. A relationship is part of our lives, not all of your life. And if you think you're going to find somebody who's going to complete you in a relationship, you're absolutely in the wrong conversation. Because for me, I'm very clear that relationship is something that you express into and you add to, not that fills you up from the outside. Because we are not empty vessels to be filled, in case you hadn't noticed. We're whole beings expressing ourselves. And a relationship is made up of two whole beings coming together and being additive beyond who they are. It's now giving you like five different pieces of the puzzle. I want to make sure you get this point again. So, marriage is not necessarily success. Marriage is just a choice people make to take their relationship to a higher level of commitment. And for some people, that's not even that much of a commitment. They fake it or they cheat, lie, whatever it is. They go into marriage for other reasons than true love, commitment, and life together. As many people out there who are watching a divorce, they can, can attest to. Being single or being divorced is not a failure either. The reality is that we choose our lives as we choose. And this is maybe the best, biggest piece I want to give you, is that your choice of how you live your life is your choice, not somebody else's. So if somebody wants to judge you because they think you're doing it wrong, that's their judgment. Let them fester in it. Because judgment is a toxin you take in yourself, not you give to somebody else. So if you feel that someone's judging you, no, it's nothing to do with you. It's them. So if you're single, or you're divorced, or you're married, whatever somebody else says to you that maybe makes you think that they think you're wrong, that's their issue, not yours. I think I made my point clear enough. Relationships are meant to be how you express. Yes, I'm a relationship coach. I help people get into relationship. The thing is, I don't force people to be in a relationship. I don't force people to be my client. So those who want the help will come to me. And that's the point, is that relationship coaches should be in the business of helping those people who want to be in a relationship. If they don't want to be in a relationship, don't try to help them. <laughs> Is that clear enough? So, um, having said and vented a fair bit today, I think that gives my, it covers my topic fairly clearly. If you are looking for a relationship and want some help in that area, this is my business, as you can probably tell. You see my 430, 440 broadcasts up to now. I've got a lot of content out there about this stuff. I invite you to take me up on my offer, which is simply to have a talk with me. On my website is an um, opportunity to click, called, it says let's chat, but what that is, it's a conversation, actually it's a complimentary clarity conversation is what I call it, or a discovery session. My gift to you, 30 minute conversation, you can sign up there, choose a slot on my calendar, fill out the form and get a talk with me. That's my gift to you. If you want to get my self-love um, practice I created last week, you can get to that by going to barryselby.com forward slash chat, sorry, barryselby.com forward slash self-love. The other one was barryselby.com forward slash chat if you want to get a discovery session. I'm sure those are clear. I'll put them in the comments afterwards. Um, this is my 440th Facebook Live, and it is Facebook Live initially, then goes on to YouTube, which is um, the channel is Barry Selby, the playlist is Messages to the Masculine, and then goes on to my iTunes uh, podcast, which is called Messages to the Masculine as well. So if you want to find out more about me, my website is barryselby.com. I invite you to take action if that's something you're looking for help with, and if you have any comments or questions about this broadcast, please put them below and I'll respond afterwards. This is a bigger topic maybe than I'm using here, but it's certainly a point in realization that marriage, divorce, singlehood are all states of choice. And you should be free to choose what you want. And with that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow for another broadcast. Oh, put your mind, this is today's Wednesday, yes. Tomorrow I'll be doing the broadcast at 4.30. I actually have a 5 p.m. Um, conference call I need to be on, so I'm choosing not to miss that, but I'm gonna put this earlier. So tomorrow join me at 4.30 p.m. Pacific time just for a difference, and it'll be number 441. I'll see what the topic is then. Thanks for being with me as always. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Bye.